Hi, and welcome to another episode of Stephen Helwig Talks Tech. Today is a special day. Not only is it the final day of the MLS season and Atlanta United is super close to making it into the playoffs, but I was able to get my hands on the new Nintendo Switch OLED in white. I've been trying to get my hands on one of these since uh, they launched a few weeks back and they are extremely hard to come by. Nintendo Switch consoles have always been hard to come by, but with the supply chain issues, the Switch OLED is even tougher. But thanks to my friend Carl, he put me onto a site called BrickSeek.com where you can check inventory for uh, local products and retailers. And I was able to find six of these sitting at a local Walmart. Of course, I only bought one but I was able to run over there quickly and they had them sitting in the back room just nobody knew about them so excited to get the switch OLED today I'm going to unbox it I'm going to give you some comparisons between the new switch OLED and the old Nintendo switch as well as give you my first impressions all right before we get going if you've yet to subscribe hit the subscribe button hit the bell if you want to get notified give the video a like share leave a comment let me know what you liked about the video and give me some ideas for future videos okay Let's get to the unboxing. So the we have the OLED switch here. Um, from what I remember, this box is actually shaped a little different from the original one, but I'm not gonna pull out the original box just to compare that piece. But if we look here um, at the switch OLED, I've gotten this one in white. Now the switch itself is still black, but the docking station and the Joy-Cons that it comes with are white. And they did the OLED in both white and a black color with the multicolored Joy-Cons. Um, some of the uh, differences of this new Switch model is, number one, it has a slightly bigger screen and it has more memory. So it's a seven inch OLED screen, which is an improvement over the previous screen. Um, it has a dock and then it, the, they've really improved the adjustable kickstand. So the dock has added a LAN port before you needed an adapter to have it wired. And then the kickstand, if you remember the kickstand from the previous Switch, it was, it was super breakable. It would snap off and it really didn't do a good job of holding the Switch up. So they've made some improvements here. So I'm looking forward to kind of comparing and contrasting the two models. Okay, so you can see kind of this new kickstand here and then um, what it looks like. What comes in the box specifically, it will come with obviously the console, two Joy-Cons, a left and a right Joy-Con in white, the straps that snap onto those Joy-Cons, and then a high-speed HDMI cable, the, the Nintendo Switch dock in white, and then a Joy-Con grip for the Switch uh, Joy-Cons to go into if you wanted to play it like this as opposed to kind of the sideways mode, and then an adapter, which works for both the dock and for the Nintendo Switch itself. All right, so let's open it. Okay, we'll do that here. Oh, oh, looks like when you open it, I have some instructions here. It's already starting to fall out, so I'm gonna hold it here. Um, you can, uh, it, they want you to plug it in directly to the switch to set up, okay? So as opposed to putting it in the dock, they want you to plug the switch directly into the outlet. And then it just shows you how to turn it on and then how to remove the Joy-Cons, okay? So not, uh, if you've played with the switch before, you probably know how to do both of those. Okay, so uh, when you first open it up, you see the main parts, which are the Nintendo Switch itself, and then the two Joy-Cons. Uh, let's see if this will come out. Okay, so you can see them here. Put that to the side. And then on, underneath you have the HDMI cable. You have the AC adapter. We have, this is the, yep, the switch, uh, the, the Joy-Con dock, controller dock, two of the straps that also give you, if you don't know this on the switch, the straps also have little left, right buttons. So if you're playing it sideways, they're easier to click. And then of course the dock itself, which is super light. And I think the other switch dock was light as well. So Nintendo does a good job about that. Okay, so that's everything in the box. Uh, let's get to looking at each of the components. So I'm going to focus on just looking at the things that are different that are coming out of the box here. You know, some of the stuff is pretty similar. HDMI cable, not that interesting, and neither are the uh, Joy-Con grip because it looks the same. But the dock is definitely different, especially in this white color. They've made uh, they've made different docks over the years. They did a Animal Crossing dock. I think they have some other specialty docks. This is the first white one that I remember, and it really looks neat because uh, there's a lot of black behind it, so it almost looks kind of like zebra striped a little bit. So this piece 
piece uh, comes off here. So this is the back of the dock that you're looking at. And it allows you to see uh, the various ports. So there's the LAN port, which is new. You have the HDMI out, and then of course your AC adapter. And they, Nintendo, even on the initial dock, had this um, area where you could feed the cables in so that it kind of nicer cable management, right? So it's not coming out of the back, but it's coming out of the side. So you can see that there, okay? So let's go ahead and snap that back on. Comes off really easy, just snaps on there. On the front, um, once again, it looks really beautiful, right? Just light, uh, white color, very bright. Uh, the Nintendo Switch logo inset there. Uh, here is where it'll show you when you have something docked. Um, it'll turn green. Uh, this is, at least that's the color the other one did. Uh, and then on the side, you have two USB ports that you can use. Um, this is super important for people that are still using GameCube, GameCube controllers uh, for uh, Super Smash Brothers. So I have an adapter that goes in here that allows me to plug GameCube control controllers into here. And then of course here, uh, you can see right down, this is where you would snap in the Nintendo Switch itself. Okay, so let's put those to the side. Let's take a look at the Joy-Cons. So not much different with the Joy-Cons. Obviously these, um, pretty typical. They're kind of much maligned. They, they work well for motion. Uh, um, there's been a lot of talk around Joy-Con drift and I've experienced it myself. Uh, but you can see here, this is the left Joy-Con. I'll take the right one out just so we can see it. But nothing special, nothing special uh, over and above what we've been used to for the Joy-Cons. They feel nice, comfortable um, to use. They click really well. And then we would slide them, over the little uh, straps over these if we needed to use them um, outside of the Switch itself. Okay, let's take a look at the Switch. All right, so we can see it here. Very pretty. It's an amazing piece of machinery. The first thing we notice on the back, and I'm gonna just put this under here because I do not want to put the screen directly on this table, is um, is the kickstand and how much larger it is. Let me try to pry this open. Wow, okay. Oh yeah, much better. Um, I'll grab the other switch here in a second and we'll do a little comparison, but just the feel, it's metallic actually. And instead of plastic, and you can tell that this is really sturdy. When you close it, it kind of snaps shut. So, and it has like a little bit of a, a mechanism here when you first open it, it kind of clicks open. So that's really good. Um, that really makes it much more usable in handheld mode. And I don't use it in handheld, in, in, in a mode like this where I have it um, with the Joy-Cons out. Usually I'm holding it. However, I, 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 there are times where I'm flying or traveling and I would want to put it kind of on the table in front of me on the plane, but the other kickstand is so unreliable. I've never used it. I feel much more comfortable here being able to put this down. And it also gives you a lot better um, range of motion. The other one, uh, you really can only have it like this, which really isn't good for your neck. You couldn't see it. This one, you can push it down. And it really reminds me of the Surface Pro, um, the Surface Pro kickstand and the way that it works and is uh, uh, will allow the device to articulate. On the top, you have the power button, the volume rocker, um, a headphone jack, and then a place for the game card here. All very similar or the, exactly the same as the old Switch. And then underneath, you'll have the micro SD card slot, which is where it was on the previous device as well. So once again, amazing engineering from Nintendo, super compact. I mean, even though we've increased the screen real estate here, it still feels compact, it still feels light. Um, we can take a look at it here with it all together. Let's kind of dock it in there. Get these snapped in. Yeah. Beautiful, awesome. So you can see kind of the look of it there. Cool. Okay, let's get up close and personal with both devices, the old Switch and the new Switch, and see what some of the differences are. Okay, let's take a look at both devices and do a little bit of um, comparing and contrasting them. So I actually have both devices stacked on top of each other here. And what's amazing is that they're almost identical in size. And so I really thought that the OLED was gonna be a little bit larger because of the additional screen real estate, but what Nintendo has actually done is just fit a larger screen 
on almost the exact same size device. So you can see here the screen for the original Switch and then you can see the screen for the OLED and you can see how much larger the newer screen is. So Nintendo has really improved the device without uh, compromising the size, right? And they feel pretty much the same in weight as well. Maybe the OLED is a little bit heavier than the original Nintendo Switch, but I think it's worth the comp, the comp or the trade-off um, for getting the larger screen real estate, okay? All right, let's turn it around and take a look at the kickstand, right? So we talked about the kickstand before. I'm gonna put this one down here very gently. And you can see the original kickstand on the Nintendo Switch. And, and you can see just how small and flimsy and fragile it was comparatively to the new kickstand, right? And it's actually easy, really easy. If you just push it a little too far, this will pop off. Now you can get it back on, which is nice, but um, it really just was not overly usable. And it only has kind of one uh, mode, which is right there. That's as far as you can get it. So you can see that's not necessarily the best uh, angle to play the game in. So if we compare that to the Switch OLED, right? That's kind of a similar angle here. That's the, this is basically the range of motion on the original Nintendo Switch, but with this, we can go all the way down here. See, much more range of motion on this device versus the other device. On the top, both devices are relatively the same, not really a lot of difference here. You see, you still have your button, your volume rocker, your um, input for, uh, for your headphone jack and your game card slot, and then under each kickstand was the SD card slot as well. Now, the shape of the buttons have changed slightly, but nothing, uh, nothing to right home about. As far as the Joy-Cons are concerned, you know, there's not really a ton of difference there either. Joy-Cons are Joy-Cons and I believe they're compatible. So I can slide on these white Joy-Cons here with the other device and I can slide these red and um, uh, blue ones onto the new device, which is awesome. Nintendo has really thought about backwards compatibility here. I might actually grab, one of the things I'll do is grab my old dock. I might not play with it, but I'll just grab it. And just to make sure the new the new Switch, which I'm actually have lost track of which one it was, but this is one here, the new OLED Switch should fit in the old dock as well. So Nintendo has just really thought about how can they just build, make a better device, but not making you have to rebuy the entire ecosystem, which I absolutely love. Okay, next we're gonna get into setting up the Nintendo Switch OLED and checking out some of the new features and how, what the setup process looks like. Okay, let's turn on the Switch and see what the setup process is like. All right, see the Nintendo starting up there. Loading the Nintendo Switch screen. Sounds good. Okay. So that's turned up pretty high. We'll go ahead and select our language and time zone here. Accept the EULA. And searching for Wi Fi networks. Okay. All right, so went through the initial setup. Now it wants me to add a user to my console. So I wanna import user data from another console. Yes, I still have my other console. Okay, will you keep using the previous console in addition to this one? Yes, I will. Okay, so for me, I'm gonna link my Nintendo account and that's gonna really help in the setup of this device. Now I have it on good word that you can't just unplug the SD card from your old device and plug it into this device, which is what I would love to do because I do have a lot of game data and save data on my SD card. But at least with the process of linking my Nintendo account, it should ease the setup process and allow me to download the information I need to download, including games and updates. So let's do that next. Okay, so before I can do that, it's gonna do a system update. So let's get the system update going. Okay, since the console's been updated, let's add the user. So we're gonna import user data. Yes, we'll go through this again. Yes, I wanna link my Nintendo account. Okay, so it's gonna navigate me to a sign-in page for my Nintendo account. Looks like it takes me out to a web page of some sort based on this information below. So I'm gonna use this. So let, give me one second to do that. Okay. Okay, uh, so it's gonna need a code from my authenticator, which is on my phone. So uh, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna go get the code. Okay, 
So I'm logged in to my account, and that's me, I'm too old for this. And I'm gonna click uh, okay. And the user has been added to this console. So now we can enable automatic save data downloads. If you enable automatic download on this console, you can easily pick up playing where you left off on another console. Perfect, let's do that. Enable. Okay. And I'm gonna skip adding another user for now. All right, we'll go next here. And we're gonna skip configuring parental controls. Now, if you're not, if you, your kids have a Switch, my daughter has a Nintendo Switch Lite, I use the parental controls very heavily. They have a, a, a great mobile app that you can use as well. And I set which days she's allowed to play and how many hours she's allowed to play each day. What, what, sh what apps she can access, what uh, rated games she can access. So this is a fantastic feature if you've not done this and your kids are using a Switch. It's a great way to lock it down to make sure they don't get access to things they shouldn't have access to. Okay, so I'm gonna skip and setup is complete. I'm gonna press home. Okay, so uh, we're here on the home screen and there's not much here. So next let's go and configure the home screen a little bit. The next thing I wanna show now that the console started up is looking at the two screens side by side and showing really what the differences are between them. So as you can see, the screen real estate, I know we talked about it, we tried to compare them when the screens were off, but it's really hard to tell until you turn it on. And you can ju see just how much larger the screen is on the OLED versus the original Nintendo Switch. Uh, even though the consoles are almost the exact same size or they're identical in size, uh, it's really hard for me to tell where there's any difference. The size of the OLED is so much different and the quality is also much better. You can see just the cleanness of the white and the difference between the white here versus the right here. These are the same themes, mind you, but the difference in the way that they look is vastly different. So I'm excited to get going and really playing some of the games on this. I might actually install Breath of the Wild, uh, which I haven't played in a long time, just to see some of the differences in the quality. Uh, and I didn't really realize how much improvement could be brought from just the screen on the device, right? A, a lot of folks were critical that this update really wasn't big enough. And um, I was one of them, quite honestly, and there's probably other things I really wish Nintendo would have done with this update, but uh, excited to have a better handheld console because this is the device uh, and the gaming console I use the most. I have an Xbox One S, but the way my life is and when I have the opportunity to play video games, a lot of times it's not sitting in front of the TV. So um, I wanna be able to play video games when I want, when I travel or when I'm downstairs or in different rooms and the Switch really offers that. So excited to play it with this new console. I'm gonna get some gameplay a little bit later, test it out and uh, have, give you guys a look at what it looks like. Okay, we're back. We've had a chance to install a couple games. Uh, Super Smash is on here. I'm gonna do a little bit of a test play with Super Smash. Most importantly, Atlanta United won their game. So it's a good afternoon here in Atlanta. So let's play a little bit of Super Smash just so we can check out the screen. So you can see the screen is just so much larger. I'll do a little bit of a gameplay as well with um, the regular Nintendo or the old Switch, I should say. This is a new character I'm playing with. I've not played a lot with Sora, but I've decided to pick him up recently. My main is usually Yoshi, which a lot of people hate, but I love Yoshi. All right, evened up. Ooh. Oh, Mario. Mario is controlling the stage. Got him. All right, let's see if I can bring it back. Got him. Let's see if I can touch him, nope. Oh. Oh, that move is so strong. Got him. That was a close one, but came out tops in the end. Thanks again for joining me here on another episode of Stephen Helwig Talks Tech. 
I'm super excited to have my hands on this new Nintendo Switch OLED. They are a super hot ticket item and hard to find in this Christmas season. So if you can get your hands on one, I recommend buying it. Even if you have a Nintendo Switch today, if you can swing it, this new device is really great. If you're a handheld Switch user, you know, if you're docking it, uh, I'm sure there's some advantages for what the device can output to your TV, but uh, I rarely dock my Nintendo Switch. So I've just been really excited in the little time I've had a chance to play with it, just how much bigger the screen is, how much brighter and vibrant it is, how much better the games look on the screen. So highly recommend getting it if you have the opportunity. Like I said, I used BrickSeek.com. Um, I was able to set up alerts for my local Walmart and Target. Uh, so that's a great website if you're looking for some hot ticket items during this, uh, this uh, Christmas season. All right. As always, we appreciate every like, every subscribe, every comment. Tell me what you thought about the video. Uh, give me ideas for future videos and uh, hit that subscribe button. All right, thanks, bye.